welcome back to the Hermitcraft FTV server. Well, there's been a lot more going on, and more folks have been active. Most recently, uh, Keralis got on the server for the first time since the reset. And in the space of just a few hours, look at what that man has produced. This thing is absolutely awesome, and like I said, this is just in the first few hours of his first time on the server since it was reset. And he's already built something awesome. <laughs> Good grief, the man has got awesome coming out of his pores. I swear, it, it's amazing, look at that. And you fly around the back here. And uh, it just continues looking great. I mean, this looks like something that you'd find in an upscale neighborhood someplace, and people would be willing to pay lots of money to get into it. And uh, across the way here, you've got uh, Jassassin putting together a pretty nice building. Looks really nice. He's got plenty of solar power on the roof now. A little farm area here, and uh, so on. And then there's this. I have no idea what this is. It puts me in mind of uh, the central support column for one of those giant cranes that they use for building these uh, big, huge, tall office buildings in uh, downtown big cities and stuff. Uh, either that or maybe the launch gantry for a rocket or something. I don't know. But that's what it looks like. That's what it puts me in mind of. So I've decided I'm going to see if I can't do something in the way of a build that will look better than stuff that I've done in the past. And so I've cleared all the trees out of my area here and I started, I put a cobble fence around the edge and the cobblestone fence is basically uh, sort of a placeholder for whatever I've eventually put there. I don't know exactly what that's going to be. And I've got uh, a double gateway here in the front. And you come in the gate and uh, there's two columns of glowstone brick. And then there's these two great big yellow trees. And these things are from Darkcraft. They are force trees and they don't normally grow this tall they usually grow about like these guys but what I did I popped a sapling down here and I bone milled it and it grew up about like one of these and I went up there and I got a shears and I sheared all the leaves off of it put a block of dirt up there and then put another sapling and bone milled it and take the block of dirt remove that, put in a log to f where the dirt was, and then I went up here, put a dirt platform temporarily down here, and uh, up here in the top you can see there's a bit of glowstone in there. Again with the shears down here, remove the top leaves, and then cut out the topmost log replaced it with a piece of glowstone and put the leaves back. And then I went down here and did it again. Piece of glowstone, put the leaves, you know, take out a log, put the leaves, put a glowstone in there, put the leaves back, or actually then take the leaves I'd sheared off before and put them on up here as an extra layer of leaves to kind of make the tree look a little more full. And I did that with both of these two. These others are their natural size. And I haven't put glowstone in them yet, although I'm going to as soon as I can get some more. I'm just about out of glowstone dust. And I've also gone ahead and uh, started some terraforming. I leveled this whole area. Got rid of all the trees and the mushrooms. I have not covered over the uh, ravine and I don't plan to. Instead what I'm going to do is this this opening into the ravine I'm going to leave it open and uh, well not quite open but I'm going to put 
I, I'm planning to put glass viewer in there because I think that will be a good effect to be able to walk over the ravine and look down into it without having to worry about flying or not falling and uh, these double steps here I originally put steps here because I was thinking it might go up further into the actual building itself but I may not need those but I want to try to build something that is going to look epic at least a little bit epic and uh, I'll, I'll tell you what having Corrales for a neighbor makes that a challenge automatically it makes it a major challenge so anyway been doing a little bit inside here as well I've kind of reworked this room a little bit I've got uh, I went ahead and I built a macerator here because uh, it was pointed out in the comments I, I believe that was oh uh, Dude, I'm sorry I don't remember your name right now. I'm terrible with names. Don't think worse of me for that. But it suggested that, you know, well, so I was asked why it was that I didn't make a macerator. And the answer is real simple. In, in uh, the versions of uh, FTB that I have played recently, uh they've all had Greg Tech except for uh, the stuff that I did on uh, Techcraft which was running the Direwolf 20 pack all these things have had tech have had Greg Tech in them and Greg Tech made the macerator really expensive requiring some diamonds and a bunch of other stuff and it was a real pain in the butt to get one and so I got used to not making macerators but we don't have Greg Tech in the Unleashed pack, and so there's a macerator. This block next to it is going to be another macerator. Here's my iron furnace, and there's going to be another one here. Uh, over here, I'm thinking a couple of compressors, and over here, at least one, possibly two extractors, and then these two going to be the first couple of recyclers and this room is uh, to to be determined I haven't quite settled on what that's going to be used for yet but it's progressing I gotta replace all this wall and a bunch of floor here with uh, smooth stone so about this dark craft thing now, as you can tell from what I've been doing outside, I have done a little bit with dark craft, but not very much. I've gone so far as to make a force rod, and this is with these force nuggets, a uh, regular stick, and a force ingot, which I actually had some in this chest, and I used those initially in my force dealings but the way you can get them is you take a force gem and any two ingots like a couple of iron or refined iron or gold or I think silver let's have a look all right okay with iron you get two four ingots with gold you get three see with silver you get three and refined iron you get three so there's several ways to get it and uh, different several different materials most of which will get you three four ingots not sure if the copper will work either kind of copper let's try that just for giggles no the copper does not work there that copper does not work okay so copper doesn't work for that but all these other metals appear to so that's how to get the force ingots 
and of course an ingot by itself you get the nuggets and so let's go ahead and get an actual for real force rod and what have I got the most of probably gold because I've got a stack in there cooking so. log two force logs that you get from okay now the force saplings you get those by taking a regular sapling oh well, I've got some around here somewhere there we are take a regular oak sapling you plant that in the ground and then before it grows you hit it with this uh, force rod now the one you make with a regular stick uh, force nugget force ingot like that like this and uh, using a regular stick here you end up with a force rod that's got a durability of three you know this is not exactly going to do very much but you take a regular sapling you plant it and you hit it with that force rod uh, right click left click I forget which and uh, it turns it into a force sapling, which you can then use bone meal to grow it fast and whatnot. You get those trees out there. The force logs go like so. Okay, that's not what the recipe showed on the wiki or in the uh, mod spotlights I saw. It is okay. Okay, two force planks get your four force sticks and then force ingot force nugget force stick gets you a fully charged force rod and that is worth a lot more keeping all my force stuff in there and put that away and the force rod can do apparently a lot more things and by the way another thing I made force wrench and that's where those other ingots that I had went you take a force wrench to do that you make a force gear which is just a stone gear with force ingots surround that with ingots like you would for a couple of other kinds of wrenches and you get the force wrench which as I understand it can be used as a wrench in a lot of other ways like for example if I uh, right click on that chest it opens oh, okay what if, what if I left click on it okay it doesn't rotate chests but it can do a bunch of stuff with these machines I believe it can rotate these yeah it can So it can rotate these machines, it can serve as a wrench in a lot of capacities. But if you shift right click, a chest becomes an item. Basically tile entities can be picked up this way. Without losing their inventory. And that's really cool. Another thing that can be picked up with it is spawners in uh, some of my mining and whatnot, I broke into a cave or two here and there and I found some cave spider spawners and I happen to have this thing with me and shift right click bingo I have a cave spider spawner three of them as a matter of fact and I'm gonna do something with that later on so that's going to be cool but uh, from what I've seen on uh, I'm looking at the uh, ftbwiki.org site and it's listing for Darkcraft because I have found very little about Darkcraft uh, so far so I'm learning this as I go so if I'm seeming kind of extra derpy that's why I don't know what I'm doing because you know I look like I don't know what I'm doing because honestly I don't alright so and come think of it, I probably don't need this bucket. What I 
need to do is get down here to where I was mining obsidian before. Because one of the things that you need with Darkcraft is this force infuser device. And to get that, you take this force rod. And I guess you... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, yeah. I'll be right back. I did need that bucket, but I needed to fill it with water first. Alright, got my bucket. And I'm going to go ahead and grab another piece of obsidian. I was going to do it with the obsidian in place and then break the item because it might be easier to do, but then I remembered all this lava around the area and decided to think better of that. I'll leave that water there. Got my obsidian. And I think what I'll do is I'll just set this stuff up in here. So take the obsidian block and I'm going to set that down right there. And then right click with the force rod and that becomes the force infuser. Of course it needs force and it needs buildcraft energy and it needs something here too which is, uh, let's see, I believe I need that to be from a book. Let's see. Okay, I could have sworn I had some reeds. Yes, I do. I have some reeds. Some leather. Let's just make a couple of books. And the way you do the book, you toss that out on the ground, right click with the wand, or force rod, whatever you want to call it, and that becomes an upgrade tone tier 1. And that goes up in here. And now we need to supply it with some liquid force and some buildcraft energy. Now for the liquid force, well, that's easy. I've got a couple of buckets of liquid force that were uh, found in stuff. Another way to do it is to just put some force gems in there. And I think there is... Uh, oh, that's right, the force gems. If you put those in a forestry squeezer, you get more liquid force than if you just put them in this table. So, I'll go ahead and drop a bucket of force in there and now the build craft energy clockwork engine, force engine, here we are a couple of force gears, pistons, some force ingots it's a force engine so let's go ahead and make up one of those Start out with the wooden gears. I'm going to need them eventually anyway. Now it's 
just make a piston. Get the redstone, get the redstone. some glass around here somewhere. Hmm. And that's a force engine. Okay. Alright, so I'll go ahead and uh, drop this force engine down here let's have a look at its interface alright uh, force goes in here can it accept gems? yes it can each gem is apparently worth a bucket of force and if you use a squeezer you get a little bit more than that alright And it requires a redstone signal to run. Okay. That's easy enough. And when it's running, it's slowly building up Minecraft jewels in the table. Turn that off for the moment. Because it needs something that it refers to as a throttle. You can put water and milk and uh, other things in there. So I've got a bucket. As a matter of fact, I've got uh, two buckets. Let's. I'm going to go out here and uh, find a couple of cows or mushrooms or whatever and get myself a couple of buckets of milk and I'll be right back. Alright, here we are. And we'll just drop some milk in here. You get your bucket back. Two buckets of milk. From what I understand, it gives a, uh, a considerable, nice little bit of bonus. Two and a half times the amount that you get out of it. So, you saw how little that was running before. And turn that on now. And it's piling up a little faster, charging the thing faster. It's outputting 10 MJ a tick. And the milk is giving it 2.5 multiplier. They ought to call that a multiplier instead of a throttle. And it doesn't seem to use this very fast, so that's good. Alright, now, go ahead and throw some more force gems in there. There, we got a full tank of force. The MJ is piling up, charging up, and I need to take a minute and look up what needs to happen next. Alright, apparently this thing is, you use it kind of like you would an enchanting table. If I shift click on that, is this upgrade tone, it's tier 1. I currently have zero force points on it, and when you do things with it, you get force points. And it's going to take me 96 to get this up to a tier 2, which opens up more things you can do. So, one of the things it's good for is uh, putting special stuff on force tools. So let's get these force sticks, get some planks here, and make some more of them. And uh, I've got a few four singles that'll be enough to start with. Okay, let's just actually do something sensible and use things. All right, let's make some more of these. And I'm going to make an axe, force axe. And since my sword is pretty much about almost dead, let's make another one. Oops, not with regular sticks, with force sticks. Alright, that will be a good start. And 
I'm gonna need let's see a force log Nuggets and a bit of sugar. All right. Okay, let's take start with the force sword. And if I put force nugget in there, that will give it uh, a knockback effect. So if I put two of them in there, I should get knocked back two. So let's just go ahead and enable this. It's doing its thing. Neat little particle effect. Knock back two. All right. And can't, apparently I can't put that back in there to redo it with something else. But if I'm not mistaken, I think I can... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, shift on this. Okay, I got 26 force points for that, and now I'm down to 70 for the next level. Now, if I throw this out here and right click it with the. F throw this out here a little farther away. Right click it with the force wand. What happens? it turns into a force shard okay then what I saw was something else alright but basically that's how that works now if I had to put sugar on it that would give it a speed effect and make it faster but uh, then there's this force axe alright now this one I know works force axe put force log on it you see here in the inventory you said okay put speed on it force log will put lumberjack so we pop that up there and as a matter of fact let me go get another log I don't know if it'll stack or not but let's find out okay I can put two force logs in there and that will put lumberjack on the force axe what do you suppose lumberjack is going to do <laughs> All right, let's uh, do this. This should give me pretty much lumberjack two or whatever because I've got two logs on there. Okay, let's go find a tree. Alright, this one right here, I've been thinking to cut that down because it's a little close to my uh, wall there. Actually, no, I don't need to do it from up there. Now, that's the way I've been cutting trees down. Go up to the top and cut them from the top down. But the force axe... I don't know if that moss would make a difference or not. You want to cut a tree down all in one go? Use a force axe. That is friggin' awesome. That's great. So, anybody thought that you needed to add something like tree capitator to the FDB pack? Nope don't need to do that at all. Three wax, three trees, bingo. No waiting. Stack of logs. Alright. Alright, now... Oh, there's stuff you can do as well with... Uh, leather armor that you can put some cool stuff on uh, you can put things like 
if you use coal you can put heat on something and that will give you uh, for a tool it will cause anything it, it drops it will try it will go ahead and smelt it and force armor it causes force punching will do an additional half a heart of fire damage and if you use it on a power rod you can uh, get a rod of fire and I think if you put it on a weapon you get uh, a flame effect and stuff like that uh, like I said I know I'm sounding really derpy here but uh, I barely know what I'm doing with this thing I'm learning this as I go as I'm doing it right now on camera uh, which, by the way, I find to be rather uncomfortable. But, alright. Um, alright. I'm just going to use the iron because I've got more of that than I do anything else. Arg. Alright. Force gems. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Two force ingots. You get force shears. And uh, that lets you do something cool. Like, for example, you take this, the leather off of cows or the feather off of chickens. All without killing the critter. So you can they grow it back and you can do it over and over again. All right. I was going to make another force sword. Duck. Gonna, well, I just remember something for once in my life. Now, like this force sword that I have right now, this is the one that Spoon gave me, and it's got looting four on it. And uh, that is uh, a tier two items. That if you use four, if you use fortunes from something called a fortune cookie, which you make with uh, paper and vanilla Minecraft cookies, then uh, you can turn the thing into a fortune thing. And put four pieces of fortune on there. So, all right, here's a new four sword. Let's go ahead and put heat on it twice. it's got fire aspect too so that's cool now there's a lot more to do with this thing and I'm really flying clueless here so I'm gonna have to take some time and uh, experiment and learn a bunch of this stuff and so on plus there is also a matter of upgrading this tome by basically getting the force points to bring it up to the next tier and that's going to take a while because each tier takes more points than the one before it and as you can imagine that can work out into being something of a grind so I'm going to uh, do some exploring and frankly I'm going to watch a few videos on this thing and uh, do some reading on wikis and so on and see what I can find out and learn about it and by next episode I ought to be able to have some cool force powered stuff. What do you think maybe I should call this room? Um, call this the uh, the Yoda Dark Craft Room or something like that or the Obi-Wan Kenobi Dark, Dark Craft Room? <laughs> well, let us force this and force that so maybe it's that force. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'm out of here.